10448. job is a, a stressful, stressful job. Some days getting up and going to work sucks. Knowing that you're coming into an environment that you may not go home that night. You pretty much you're walking into war every day. I'm being verbally assaulted, if not physically assaulted. So you have to be able to deal with the stress of when it's time to go to work. I'd say I'm fine until I get to the facility, then my heart beats a little faster. You really never know what to expect when you're coming to work. Could be a good day, it could be a bad day, it could be your last day. Behind all the walls here, it's like a lava flow going through the ground. You feel the tension and you're just waiting for it to erupt. I have a cigarette at the beginning of each day. I mean, you just need something extra to actually get through your day or even just start your day just to be here. Any time this place just could go up like a volcano and it's really dangerous. Here at the penitentiary of New Mexico, we have a history of prison violence that ended up in a riot. As soon as you pull up to that front gate, you drive a couple hundred yards down is the old main, the old facility where the 1980 riots happened. Prisoners armed with knives, guns, and pipes are in complete control of the New Mexico State Penitentiary tonight. They smashed their way into the prison control center, overpowering the unarmed guards inside and seizing keys to the entire prison. Then, the orgy of killing began. Every violent rapist, informant, everybody was in one place. And so once this prison was lost, it was open hunting season on inmates. These particular marks, you'll see these, uh, these marks in the concrete. We had a beheading here of one of the inmates. You can't help but notice the old main, and it's just crazy to think it's what happened here. I went to cell block four. I saw the burnt body marks. I saw where they decapitated somebody. I saw where they burned the grills. The reminders of it is, you know, every day you might not go home and uh, it's definitely dangerous. It puts a weird feeling in your gut. You just gotta hope that that doesn't happen to you or any of your brothers and sisters. Do your job, keep your fellow staff safe, keep yourself safe, make sure everyone goes home. So I think staring that in the face every day is motivation. Of mistakes that were made in the old main. We're still understaffed today. There's usually only one officer or two to a post when there should be three or four. And that leaves people tired and staff spread thin. After the riot, we created what we call the rover position. Basically, a rover is roving around throughout the facility where he or she is needed throughout the day. Where are you working today? Um, I'm escort A. All right, I'll check back with you in a minute. OK. This is my first week as a rover. When I come into work, they can put me wherever they want me. And you just really never know what's going to happen on a day-to-day -day basis, so you always have to be ready. Get me. There's nothing in there. 
There's just four walls. <laughs> this was my first time dealing with an inmate that had cut himself. <laughs> Did you get any sleep last night? <laughs> It's not always violence against the COs or inmates on inmates. Sometimes inmates are just trying to hurt themselves. They're, 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 they're trying to get me. They keep fighting. Right now they're fighting. It's not good when they fight. They fought all night long, waking me up. He just kept talking about how the voices told him to do it. So they had mental health in there talking to him. Where's this stuff at, man? Where'd you get it from then? Where are you getting it from? I need it. Did he go somewhere? I'm not sure. They said it was a little. small little brass piece of metal. Just flattened out. I'm not too sure what it was. It's just a piece of, like, a little piece of metal. A lot of inmates hide things up their butt, and they can only cough so much and make them squat. You really want to keep something, <laughs> you will. And he obviously kept that, and he cut himself on the arm. At the Old Main, they used to house the mentally ill with general population, and I can't imagine how that would be today. Mental health inmates are now housed in the APA unit. You pile. CC Winder Leonard, S pot. Having all the mentally ill inmates in one unit seems better for them. But at the same time, though, it makes it a lot more dangerous for us. We're not regular inmates, you know? We're just crazy. We're the type of uh, mental health patients that um, we could have a psychotic episode and end up on death row. We're not the type of people that have like their conscience or um, you know other other things that normal people have, you know. I have anger management impulse disorder. I have a brain injury, and I mean, I think people take advantage. They can say, you know what, he's not really all there, so we can use him. I mean, use him to do stuff. I shanked one of the cert team members in the neck. I proved myself, know that I wasn't no punk, that I could do something. When you shanked an officer in the neck, how does that make you feel? It makes me very leery. It makes me wonder if, if he'll do the same thing to me. Yeah, but you understand his apprehension? I agree with him. Sometimes you just can't hold it back. I mean, I swear I know where he's coming from. I mean, It looks good. Yeah. Pretty soon he'll be out on the street again. This is something he needs. He needs to be reintegrated back into population because if we don't, then we're never going to know how they act. I don't know how I'm going to react when people are going to be walking around me, even in a, at a, a gas station or, or even at the mall where it's crowded. I don't know how I'm going to act. I'm going to be like paranoid. I'm not going to feel comfortable with somebody walking behind me. It's just, it's been a long time. I don't know how I'm going to act when I get out there. And, yeah, I'm scared. A lot of people say they're not, but I'm scared. I think everybody is, no? But at the same time, giving this to these inmates that have been known for their violent past, you know, makes us very wary. When he's out here cleaning, we basically give him weapons. He's got broom handles, he's got chemicals, he's got water, he's got buckets. There are seasoned and veteran officers here who don't think that this should happen at all. Some of them have come from the old main where the riot happened. They've seen people getting shanked and they've seen people getting killed. We don't know what his intentions are. It's kind of scary the riot happened here. Every day I'm thinking, hey, is this going to happen here? Is this going to happen here? Is this going to happen here? Hey man, I'm Tyler Arian. I'm here to report to uh, Trinidad Lucero. 
Yeah. Thanks, man. Have a good day. You too. Be safe. Our whole thing with corrections is to make somebody a better person. We have inmates, you know, driving tractors. We've got inmates out here doing different pipe fittings and all these different types of traits that they can actually use when they get out of here to, to find work and get money. Hey, what's up, Trinidad? How you doing? Excited. A little bit, a little nervous. A little bit of everything, you know what I mean? You'll have four inmates on your crew. Just remain vigilant as you would anywhere else. Um, Where are the tools checked out? They're going to be right by the warehouse. There's going to be the tool shack there. When I pick up the inmates, how do I take them from level two over there? I just get in the vehicle, pick them up. They'll hop in with you. So here's the keys. Cool. Okay. Thanks, sir. We'll see you in a few. Yes, sir. When inmates come to prison, they get assigned a job. This is part of their programming. Gonzalez. Creating jobs on the inside for inmates gives them the ability to learn new skills. When they get out, they become a productive part of society instead of creating more crimes and coming back to prison. The flip side of this is by giving the inmates tools and taking them off site, it creates a greater security risk for our officers. But that's just part of the job. Driving the inmates in the vehicle, it, it is kind of scary because one's a drug dealer, One's in there for assault and battery. You're sitting right behind me, right next to me in the vehicle, there's four of them, one of me, in a closed vehicle. If they really wanted, they could take me over and boom, they'd be gone. I don't know if I'm coming home tonight. This building represents the most tragic, most violent prison riot in our entire nation's history. The rioters quickly gained control of the entire prison and set fire to the administration building. Some inmates were dragged from their cells and beaten against the prison walls. Others were dismembered. We weren't securing these corridors in the way that we should have. So what started out as an incident that should have been contained in one particular housing unit ultimately led to the overtaking of this entire facility. It just makes you like think, like, hopefully this never happens again. For me and a lot of other officers, it's a brutal past. It's something that we never want to go back to and something that we will put our lives on the line so it never happens again. But at the same time, though, the future can't be told. It's kind of a big responsibility transporting inmates by myself. I'm pretty nervous. I don't know what to expect. I don't know any of these inmates. Most of them have anger problems. So you piss them off and they get mad quick and fast. Today we're going to be doing a hoop house over here, OK? So the first thing that we need to start doing is unloading this truck. My job is to supervise and make sure they're doing their job and nobody runs off. Now we'll get these boards right here. If you look behind us, we have houses around us. If an inmate decides, hey, I'm out of here, all he's got to do is run any, any which way, and he can go wherever. And then we have a fugitive on the loose. You have to be on your toes. You have to watch out for people getting pissed off, with pools in their hands. Up the hoop. Hey guys, get those knives. Damn. The bone crusher right there. The no gun, it's a very, very dangerous weapon. If they rig it, they can shoot nails at random, and they can seriously hurt somebody and kill them. Put the other four screws in. It's really good to make a shank with a screw. 
All you gotta do is screw it into a handle, put some paper around it or melt some plastic around it. A couple times to the neck, a couple times to the back, someone could be done. <laughs> Hopefully these guys will take these skills and opportunities and use them when they get out. I was really surprised to show up to my post today. I had no idea p &M had a cake decorating program. It was a little weird to know the background on certain inmates and then to see them baking cakes, especially with all the access to knives and pots and pans. I'd say the kitchen is the most dangerous place to be. We've had a lot of fights in here before. It just kind of makes you wonder how they're going to use these utensils and if they're going to use them right and to make sure they're not going to hurt other inmates or COs. What did you think when they first asked you about this class? They asked us if we wanted to learn how to decorate it. <laughs> just sit down and something different. I don't think it's necessarily fair that you could murder somebody and then go down to the level five and get all your privileges back, just as, like, as if you were at home learning how to cook. Have you guys ever baked before this? But then again, I was told at the time of the riot they didn't have these certain kind of programs for the inmates, and that's why they were kind of upset. You know, open up your own bakery after. I was thinking of uh, Breaking Bad kind of bakery. <laughs> this is better. I do hope these inmates take these skills to learn seriously. I didn't even know how to do all this before. I don't even know how to do all this. Hmm. We should have a baking class for COs. Yeah. I mean, I'm no Betty Crocker, but I'm pretty close. <laughs>
We received an anonymous note about the fight going to break out. We take every threat seriously due to the riot that happened in 1980. There's an inmate in green, and he's staring down at the inmate in cell 102. In the academy, we learned when stuff is being dealt with in a pod amongst the inmates to let it play out. It's better if we don't conflict right now at this moment due to the fact of our lives being in danger. It looked like something was gonna go down between these guys, but it doesn't seem like they know it was about them because they seem pretty cool with each other. That means something may still go down with this pod. We're gonna stay alert and keep our eyes open. I'm getting ready to go back into APA now to go serve chow. This is definitely one of the most nerve wracking parts of the day. All the food here at p and for the inmates is actually prepared by other inmates. We oversee them as to what goes into the food to make sure there's no contraband passed through. And then from there, we actually load onto the trucks and we take it to each individual housing unit. When it comes to APA in here at the level six, all these inmates actually get their food handed to them through the food port. These inmates here, they have really bad impulse control problems and they're very violent. So anytime that you open that food port, you have to be on your toes. One of the things that the riots taught us is that danger lurks even in the most mundane parts of the job. The food port is the first contact with an inmate. Everything we do with an inmate is through the food port. If they do get something in there somehow, some way, I imagine they can make a shank. When you open that food port, what should it say that they're not gonna be able to get into you? And that is where we get drilled into through the academy and even to this day. You approach a food port door. I always stand at the one and a half out here. If I want to come out, I'm going to try to grab you and get you here. I can't really get you here. Were you up late or what? They will pull you through that food port. They pull you in here, they're slicing you up. There's going to be scars on your arms. It's going to remind you every day, the rest of your life. And the real sickos in there, they'll have some pissing As soon as they cut you and hold you and you're freaking out and bleeding, they pour that on you. Imagine the infections you'll get, all because you take shortcuts. It's a little bit of extra work, right? But at the same time, you're not getting stabbed in the face. Danger right here. Another reason that we take so much caution around the food ports is because if for some reason they're able to stab you and to uh, disable you, if they get a hold of your keys, it can lead to a pot erupting and even more than likely a riot. Every day that I come to work, I give my wife a kiss goodbye. I give, my, I give my kids a hug and I tell them that I love you. I don't tell them that I'll see you later because at the end of the day, you never know. It's yard right now and uh, these guys are coming out after lockdown, so we'll see what's gonna happen right now. These guys come out to wreck every day. They get an hour in the yard. In the yard, they're allowed to play basketball, they play handball, they work out, or they just communicate with each other and just walk around in circles. Even though we know there's tension, we start to get them wrecked due to the fact we don't want them getting more aggravated inside the pot. If you just keep them locked up, they start getting really tense with each other and conflict may break out. Sometimes it's about managing all the threats and hoping for the best. These guys, if they're gonna fight, they're not just gonna 
do a little petty fight, they're gonna fight, they're gonna go all out. So when it hits a fan, stuff's gonna hit the fan. It's gonna go and it's gonna go big. We're gonna be watching them, making sure nothing happens. Meanwhile, the tower is looking over the entire yard. We have to write everything that happens. In the tower, you're pretty much the eyes and ears of the facility, and you have to monitor everything that goes in and out, just make sure everyone's doing what they're supposed to do. Inmates in the yard now, I was told about an anonymous note that was found in their unit warning about a fight. So I need to keep my eyes open for warning signs, body language, anything. Tower's rocking, no coming up. Yeah. Oh. No fight control, we have a fight. Oh It was pretty crazy to see how fast they got there and how quickly they had everything controlled. Before the riot, they didn't have procedures like this to stop the action. That's why they weren't able to contain it when it started. If we didn't learn from our mistakes, I don't know what would have happened today. Chavez this morning. So we're trying to get back over there for the aftermath of what happened. Fortunately, I can't let any civilian staff in them until that unit is secured. What happened? What did you hear on the radio? What do you know about I this? believe two inmates got an assault, an incident out there. The assault was taken down real quickly. Now we're actually just securing the yard, uh, hence why you guys can't meet up with your officer at this point in time. We can't assume the fight is squashed, so we're searching for anything they could use to retaliate against each other. Hey, close five real quick. So technically this is altered, this could be considered a shank, but we're just gonna, we're gonna take this and throw it in the trash can. It's gotta no longer have this in his property anymore. It could have been worse with this, the blade if he would have wanted to go out there and shank the guy. Obviously these were the guys that know it was about. I believe we're able to contain it and minimize the damage. Mr. Allen, how are you today? Doing all right. This group of inmates that I work with specifically, they are a special type of inmate that need extra psychological help. The mentally ill, before the riot happened at the Old Main, they were kept in population with all the regular inmates. Basically, this opened them up to being preyed upon. They would get beaten up, they would get hurt. And this here was one of the main causes of why the riot happened. The riot has actually taught us that when it comes to mentally ill inmates, that we have to keep an eye more on them because they're more willing to lash out, whether it be at hurting themselves or hurting staff. How are you today? You feeling all right? When you work with them, it's a very delicate situation where you have to be on your toes. It's just very, 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 very dangerous. Ardonias, 
He's a hard one to figure out because one second he's okay, the next second he's not. In this specific pod with the volatility that, that goes on, it's a domino effect. Once one person goes off, then it'll go to the next, the next, the next, and all of a sudden now you got an entire pod that's going off. And when they go off, it gets dangerous because these guys, they don't know reality from fake. Teapot! From the time that we've actually started the academy, basically what we're told is just to listen to them, hear what they have to say. Let's actually talk to you through here so we don't have to yell. What's going on? The, the noise that I'm making are emotions that I'm making okay. now. Because I'll be asleep sometimes, and I'll wake up at 1, 2, 3 in the morning and bang the house. I'll be so pissed off at voices and, um, and visions. And I don't know what else. To it's do. better to let it out, in other words. I just blow up. OK. I'm glad you figured it out a healthy way to let your emotions out. Yeah. But just for the sake of everybody else, though, it may just tone down just a little bit. But this is prison, and they have to understand that, you know, they don't like me, they just have to deal with it. Hey, Martinez, I don't want no drama in here. I just don't know why you're going to come and tell us something, you know what I mean? You know, I don't need nobody to be my daddy or tell me what to do. Yeah. You know, if there's something going on, I like to know only so that way, mentally, I can be prepared if anything happens because if certain individuals get pushed too far, you know what happens. No, this is bad. This is really, really, really bad. Ardonius is about to set up the whole pod. This is prison. And whatever happens is going to happen. Yeah. Around the time of the riot, if an inmate fought another inmate or attacked a CO, they'd be put in solitary confinement. But they decided that solitary confinement messed with the inmate's head and made them more dangerous. So now they put them in one unit, level five, until their punishment is done. When I got my shift today, I didn't know Villacano was going to be here, and he's from my class. And that was pretty exciting, because it's always cool to work with somebody you know. You ready? Almost? Huh? You ready? I don't have a cup key, though. Can we open the door? Yeah, you know, just making rookie mistakes. <laughs> Is that a rookie mistake? <laughs> Did you hear me? I came in and they, they said that two of our new inmates were supposedly on a fight Friday. There was a fight out in the courtyard over there. So those are the kind of ones that we kind of keep an eye out for. We kind of make sure that they're not going to do anything stupid because they've already done something stupid to get them thrown in here. So more of a high alert kind of standard with them. Hey, I'm famous or what? <laughs> hey, I'm famous as <laughs> um, I'm not too sure what the fight was about. There's just a lot of drugs and gangs and gambling going on. It doesn't take much for a fight to happen here. I do like Ronnie. Am I? Yeah. This is the first time these guys have been face to face since they fought. And I don't know what's going to happen. Hey, this was all over my body, my watches, my shorts. I couldn't get you, ass. I couldn't see on my name tonight. I know you're talking about. I don't like to wrestle, so I'm short. You know what I mean? I'm over here trying to force the swing. Here's a short. I'm like, bang. That's a It definitely catches me as strange that they're kind of acting like they're best friends all of a sudden. Trying to hit us with Three of them. And they took 60 days. Yeah, boy. Hey, Mother's Day, no more call, no not all. Hey, when is Mother's Day? Fourth tonight. No, the tenth. Ten. Sunday. Is it normal for guys after an altercation to bury the hatchet? Uh, I'm not really too sure. It's unpredictable. Maybe they're just trying to throw each other off guard. Maybe when they do see each other again, he's just gonna let them have it.
There's Udon is. If I'm not able to calm down Rodonias, there's a really good chance that things are going to go really sour with the entire unit. If he goes off, the entire unit's probably going to go off. We all got mental health issues, and we're just all crammed up in, uh, in boxes. We, we, just, we just can't get along. Yeah. We're, you know, them guys down there are cutters. This looks like it's getting bad. This looks like it's getting really, really bad. What's up, Otero? I'm getting fed up with this, with this, with this you know, before I stress out and have to take things on my own hands. David Otero, for him to get his way, he likes to cut. He likes to cut himself. He likes to mutilate himself. I, I can do something to make these fuckers put me in the hospital and spend thousands and thousands and thousands of surgeries on me. David Otero, he is very volatile. He's already talking about cutting himself or hurting himself to where it can cost the state thousands upon thousands of dollars. It scares me every day that I come in here that I'm gonna do a unit check or I'm gonna have to go pull somebody out and they're they're on the ground. They're on the ground because they cut and I didn't catch it. You know, that's something that's on my mind. If a person were to walk up to me and say, why should I care for murder hurts himself? They're still people. It is my job to, uh, to ensure their safety, not only from other inmates, but from themselves as well. If they do hurt themselves, whether I can prevent it or not, it still hurts me because I know that I failed in my job to prevent that from happening. Once the correctional officers graduate from our academy, the education, the training doesn't stop. They have 40-hour training annually. We've implemented a riot control class. They get tear gassed. We basically run them through a gas house training to make sure they understand what it feels like, what it tastes like, and to also make sure they know that they can survive and fight their way out of it. eyes start burning right away, snot's coming out of your nose, you can't breathe, it feels like someone punched you in your sternum. <laughs> well, I held my breath the whole way until the end, and as soon as he opened the door, I let my shirt go, and that's when I got it all. It was horrible. That I'd rather get maced, homie. It was killer, but hey, we gotta get used to it. That's what we're gonna be seeing at the facility. Um, we gotta go in there, get our brothers and sisters out of there, so we gotta experience it sometime or another. Look at me. You're gonna taste that all the time. There's fights every day over there. Good job. Thank you, sir. I got you. Come on. Man up. Come on. History always repeats itself. And we're trying to collectively here make sure that doesn't happen again. Hey, listen up. Man up. That's just a little taste right there. Bad people do stupid stuff. You'll throw out to throw chemicals. If your brother and sister is fighting over here, you're going to run over there, cry about it? No, man up, all right? Sir, yes, sir. What's up, Otero? I'm getting fed up with this, with this, you know, before I stress out and have to take things on my own hands. David Otero, for him to get his weight, he likes to cut himself. It scares me every day that I come in here that I'm going to do a unit check or I'm going to have to go pull somebody out, and they're, they're on the ground. They're on the ground because they cut and I didn't catch it. You know, that's something that's on my mind.
by the time we actually get people over here to get this situation calmed down, it's really erupted. that kind of stuff is popping off, how do you think it affects the officers and the job they have to do? It must be scary. It's like trying to put an end to, to war, you know? You see, you see it, another war will start. Today is just one of those days where you ask yourself that question, why? When you actually know that these people just look through you like you're not even there, like you're, like you're a window, and all they're doing is looking through you to get to the other side. You know, and it's kind of frustrating sometimes. Does this place get to you? A little bit. This building reminds us every day as we drive in, not only of our past, but our present and what the future needs to be. People underestimate the danger and negativity that are inside these prison walls. And I don't think that we give these men and women that credit often enough. I hope it serves as a reminder of just how important their work is. Before they take a post anywhere in this prison system, I hope that they'll truly reflect upon what can happen when we take our eyes off the ball. The Old Main is a reminder of what can happen if you don't do your job right. Anything can go wrong at any moment in time. It's always in the back of your mind, am I going to walk out of this place at the end of the day? Because you're always having to think of the worst. If you think the worst going to come in here, then you'll never be disappointed. It's very important to learn from the past, because if you don't learn from the past, the past is going to happen again. It's a reminder, we're in prison. This is Hal in here. And I always need to stay on my guard and do my job the right way and don't take shortcuts. This is about respecting and reflecting on our past. As long as I'm here, it will never be torn down. How we do it. The biggest thing in prison is drugs. They'll look for anything, anything that is mind altering, even the slightest, they will do. Keep an eye on those inmates. They like to do drug drop offs up there. As you can tell, the inmate obviously knows the individual. He's hand signaling them about stuff. Oh. If someone's in a gang and they have all the drugs, that's going to run everything. It happens all the time. Everybody get to the front against the wall. What do you got in your mouth? Spit it out. He just swallowed it. Take me seriously. Hey, look like I'm 12 years old. My biggest fear is not going home to my wife. Sooner or later, you're gonna have to go face your fear. Put the weapon down! That's what we do every day. 